Hey everyone, my name's Okami the Wolf One, and I'll be teaching you today how to make a Super Metroid style map in Game Boy Studio. So here we've got my game Bazooka Bunny Bounces Back, and you can see if I hit pause. Oh, I get a flashing logo showing my location on a map, and it even tells me via text. And once the dialogue is gone, I can move around freely. Nice. And back to the game. So, here's how we do this. First of all, you're going to want to go over to the level you're working on. In this case, we were in the City Midtown level. All right, and you're going to want to attach two scripts. The first is you're going to want to, via inputs, attach script to select button, which is in the input, so attach script to button. And in this case, we're using select. You can use whatever you want. Uh, store current scene on stack, which is basically how the game handles pause menus. So that will stack this, the map scene on top of the game scene. And then when you return from stack, it'll go back to the previous scene you were in. Uh, and we want to change it to a specific location in our map scene as well. The second thing we want to do is we want to attach a variable so that and again this is all on initialization when uh, in this case I've called the variable map marker Delta and I've set it to 11 so that whenever you're in this location that variable is set to that specific number and each location has that variable set to a different number to correspond to a different location so we'll just go down to the map level I've got right here and as you can see I've got this long level right here is the city midtown map that we're on and you can see this is where when I set it to change location uh, in the city midtown I set it to go to right here now on your map level all right on initialization you want to hide the player character and you want to hide the actor in this case the actor is the map marker itself and the map marker is simply just a little blip uh, and the second frame is blank so that it creates a flashing animation uh, and you want to disable collisions as well just in case for both for the player and the actor if you want again you want to attach a script to a button in this case both star and select will restore first scene from stack which will return to the previous scene, in this case, City Midtown. The most important one is, as you can see, map markers. This is the variable that we set earlier, so that when we were in City Midtown, we set it to the variable map marker delta to 11. So in this, if the variable equals 11, you want to set the actor's position to, in this case, right where we spawned in to this level. You want to show the actor. Remember, we hid the actor upon initialization. And you can display text, you know, to tell you uh, the location. Uh, since the player character is hidden, you can freely move around once you've X'd out of the text in the level. An important thing here to note is that if your map is larger than one screen, you're going to want to have a couple different actors uh, because if the actor is too far off screen, it won't spawn in and it will not appear when you pause the game and go to your map level. So I haven't set it up yet, but I will probably need to have three actors spread across this map level. And as you can see, I have a few locations set, but I have a lot more to go. This, uh, this one map has like uh, 60 locations. Um, I believe variables, I don't know if the numbers are still tied to 256. Um, but if you've got that many scenes, uh, I would definitely have like multiple areas. You could also set it so that an actor will spawn in if, say, a character says, I've marked this on your map, and then you can check your map, and an actor that was previously hidden, you could set it so that a variable is tripped, and now the actor is shown, and it could show a new location on your map. That would be one way of adding map markers to your map. So I hope you enjoyed this short little tutorial. I'll see you next time.